All right, in this video, we're gonna be covering families. Um, I know we briefly covered them in a couple previous videos, but I wanted to fully cover them so that we had a, uh, the concept of what families are and what we're doing with them completely. So um, as you will remember from the previous videos, um, a bunch of these require certain um, aspects of the model to be in place. So for example, if I wanna go place this door right here in level one, you can see that it's not going to let me place the door no matter what I do. Doors must be assigned to a wall. So if I'm going to place this door here, I need to have a wall to place it in, okay? Um, along the same vein, I can't place a window outside of a wall. I need to place it inside a wall, okay? Um, so when you're working with doors and windows and then several other components will go over, um, the entire family may require being placed into a certain area or certain parts or certain um, elements within that family may require being placed into a certain area. So keep that in mind um, when you're working on things and trying to place families in. So to that end, I'm gonna draw just a small kind of like space right here that we can work in that has a floor. And then we'll do another chunk right here with a ceiling. Um, just so that we've got something we can look at in 3D. And let's tile that. Um, okay. So, uh, so let's jump back through here, and I just kind of want to go over what some of the options are. So we don't have to go. Um, as you guys kind of remember, we can load new doors um, through here. So if I go to load family, choose doors, it's got a whole bunch of doors here. Um, similarly, if I go through windows, I'll have to navigate backwards usually. I didn't choose anything, so it didn't change where this was pointed at. Um, but you have windows are in here. Um, you can only load windows through the uh, windows option right here. So if I try to add a door this way through the windows option, well, it used to get mad at me. Yeah, okay. Um, you. So um, when you're loading doors and windows, you can only load doors when you're in the doors section here, loading the family and same with windows. To access the rest of the, or the most of the rest of the components, um, or most of the rest of the families, you're gonna go through place a component right here. Um, for now, we're gonna be discussing the basic option here, which is place a component, but in the next video, we'll be doing model in place. So if I wanna place a component, I'll click on that. Um, again, because of the, uh, option that we chose we have a couple default options that are pre-existing in our template um, but uh, we can load more so i can go to load family come on there we go um, and if i go back here i can choose things like casework um, so this is going to be your cabinets and things um, for different purposes so instead of having to model a cabinet like this i could load one directly from there and then go in and place it um, we have a lot of the same controls here, so, um, and this, and you can see in this particular instance, this doesn't mind being placed on a floor or a wall or wherever, it's just kind of fine going wherever. Um, I can place it hanging out in open space over here, so there it is just floating. So this is one of those ones that's fine being placed on pretty much anything. Um, now something that all these usually have in common is, um, that you will place it onto a surface. So. Um, I probably can't place this cabinet in the 3D view. Oh, I can't do it in 3D view, um, but elevations. Let's try and place it in the elevation view and it's probably gonna get mad at me. Yeah, so I can't place it in this view. So there are certain limitations to where that one can be placed. Um, and again, this probably goes for the entire family in this case, for casework. Um, from the 3D view, or sorry, for, from the uh, 2D view, I can select the casework or cabinet here, um, and I can do things like I can rotate it with the rotate tool. So I'll just go 90 degrees there. I can drag it. Um, I can also use the alignment tool uh, to line this up against a wall, um, and it should do that. Or with a lot of these especially, they'll just snap to the wall in case you're trying to do that. Um, so very easy to place, um, but when you assign them, you assign them to what's called a plane, and we'll, we'll go over planes in exhaustive detail in the next video. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but what a plane is, is it's where that gets assigned to. 
And so in this case, because we're assigning it to the ground plane, um, it's going to be stuck there. But we do have options to lift it up and down. So if I wanted this, oops, move the mouse out. Um, if we wanted to lift this one up, I could come over here and tell it um, to be a foot off the ground, for example. Um, let's just show this right here. Elevation from level is what that is fully defined as. So um, let's see. Um, so similarly, we have doors and windows over here. And this I haven't really discussed with you guys. But um, you can actually adjust the sill height of a lot of these things. So if I wanted to oops, bump this up a little bit, um, I could bump the doors up. But more often, you'd be doing that with the window. Um, so if I wanted the windows to be a little bit taller in a house I was working on, there we go. Um, I could go through here. Now, because windows and doors can be assigned to walls, I can actually come in through um, the 3D view or through the elevation. Oh, let's do this one. Um, I can actually assign them through this view too, which makes it easy to place, for example, windows that go in a certain angle here. And if I really wanted to get fancy and accurate about it, um, what I would do is use a model line. Um, and um, again, we'll go over this in a bit more detail. Um, that's probably, nope, that's the wrong plane. Yeah, that's the wrong plane. Um, We'll go over this in a bit more detail, um, this menu in particular. Um, but I could place a model line like that and then do a series of windows and try and get them aligned up closely to that. Um, might be more worth my time to just measure that out accurately. Um, but you could, for example, get windows stacked up in a direction like that. Um, same with doors, um, I think they do snap, yeah, they snap to the levels, so they'll snap to a wall and a level, so it's an extra step there that they're required to do. So um, what else can you do with components? Well, the components menu here is just a whole option, um, let me just clarify, the component menu here is just a collection of all kinds of other stuff. So um, let's see. We have cabinetry, we have, um, let's see, if we were doing electrical stuff, there'd be like conduit and fittings and stuff. Um, we're not going to be doing electrical stuff for this class. Um, same with mechanical and plumbing. Um, so don't worry about those other things there. Um, things like, um, let's see. These are weird things that they just, I don't know. Um, let me find a better section here. So, uh, entourage. So if you need to throw just a fake person or a fake car or some desk, you know, stuff on a desk there, um, you've got a couple options in entourage. Um, as far as furniture, the options aren't great here either. Um, <laughs> a couple TVs from the 90s and stuff. Um, beds are gonna, are super awesome. Um, you don't have to go out and find your own. Um, same with storage, you could use a lot of these for getting stuff together. Um, same with the seating, there's a ton of great options in here. Um, lighting is probably the other one that you're going to find yourself using a whole bunch of. And so if you need lights, um, there's a whole bunch of different ones in here. Um, and the lights is usually a case where like you can't put them anywhere except a floor. So like this will only snap to the first floor it looks like. Yeah, level one, so I could change this to level two um, and it'll just apply to level two somewhere. Um, so if I go to place this, we'll place that right there next to my window. But if I go to grab a different component that's also a light, um, let's try this wall washer. This wall washer will probably only attach to a wall, so I can't even place it here in level one. If I go to this elevation, no, it's not even gonna let me do that. Do I have to place it on a ceiling? Component, wall washer, yeah. So this one very specifically needs to be placed on a ceiling and it won't go anywhere else. Um, 
What is handy about that is that, for example, now I don't have to go and do anything else with these because they default to where they're supposed to be. So there are some upsides and downsides to it, but this is a little bit of a complicated system. Um, so hopefully that answered a couple more options. There are some things that we will also be doing later. Um, for example, um, let me see if I can remember exactly how it went. Um, later on in the class, we'll be doing, we'll be tagging, what do we tag? I think we do room tags. Um, let's see. Um, so let's go, uh, room tag. So, um, one example of this is that, um, some, again, these are just kind of more families that are, in, that are included with Revit. Um, you wouldn't traditionally think of them as families, but they are. And so far as you can load more of these, you can modify them. Um, so if I was placing a room into this space, oops. Let me just do this real quick so we have a defined room so that we can tag it. That's what, going through a window there, meh. Okay, um, so if we go to uh, tag a room, um, we don't just have to use this format. We can actually change the type tag um, to show the area or the volume of the room, which, yeah. Um, so we will be doing something where I will require you guys to include not just the room tag um, with the name of the room, the room number, but also um, make sure that you use the one with the square footage so that we can see how much square footage is in a space. Um, so that's kind of my basic tutorial on what families are. Um, next, we will get into modeling. So I will do that in a separate video.